Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on how to use Dorico. In this video I will cover the basics of creating, editing and playing back your music in Dorico. And this will be the first episode in this series and I will cover every aspect of Dorico in the coming videos. Alright, so let's go. So let's start with Steinberg Hub, which is the first window when you open up Dorico. The Steinberg Hub window has three tabs, Open Recent, Create New, and Learn. The Learn tab shows you the latest news and updates from Steinberg, such as new features, tips and tricks, tutorials, and special offers. So basically, it's, it's really self-explanatory here. You can check it out. You have the Dorico blog also here, which you can use to um, check out the latest updates and bug fixes. The next step is uh, Open Recent, uh, opens an existing project which you have already worked on. But uh, the one that we're going to work now is uh, Create New Project. So to create a new project, you can click on Create New button. Now you can choose a template of your choice. Unfortunately, till now, we don't have an option to create custom templates, but of course you can save a project file and reuse it in other works. On the right side of this window, uh, we have where we can put the credits for this project, as well as other details such as page size, rastral size, which is the size of a full five line staff measured from bottom line to the top line. And other details in these tabs are time and key signatures. There's also a checkbox here that says project will use multiple flows. Flows are a pretty neat feature in Dorico. Imagine them as different movements of a piece, and each one of these movements can have its own tempo, time, and key signature. You can also use them creatively to have your drafts on one flow and one actual score on another flow. You can always add flows to your projects, so if you forget to tick the box, it is fine. The only thing is that this box will already create a layout for you that is suitable for a score with movements. Here. Take a look at the difference. This is with the checkbox. And here is without. Okay, so now that we are finished with Steinberg Hub, we can move on to Dorico. I'm going to select the template here as an example. So, for example, let's say Choir SATV with Organ. I'm going to write the project title. and also composer, my name. And I'm just gonna keep the time signature and key signature as it is. And then I'm gonna click on create project. Dorico has five modes. Setup, write, engrave, play, and print. Each mode has a different set of tools and options for working with your music. You can switch between modes by clicking on the icons on the top left corner of the screen or by using keyboard shortcuts Control-1 to Control-5 on Windows or Command-1 to Command-5 on Mac. Once you're in setup mode, you will notice that there are several sections to explore. We already know what flows are, so let's begin with uh, players. The player section allow you to define and manage the musicians or groups of musicians who will perform in your composition. You can add or remove a player or assign multiple instruments to a player. Adding a player is as simple as clicking on add player button and selecting the desired instrument. If you want to add a section player, you can click on the button down here. And the difference between single and section player is that single players can hold multiple instruments while section players can only hold one instrument. As you can see, there is no plus button here. The plus button is for adding instrument to players. And there's a plus button here because this is a single player and this is a section player. To add an ensemble, click on the add ensemble button, which is down here. And you can just build whatever you want. 
easily and then click add and also to group instruments you can just choose whatever you want here by holding the shift button and clicking and then grouping them and you can see here there is the group bracket So now let's move to write mode. This is where you enter your music with all the details. You can use a mouse, the computer, or a MIDI keyboard, or a combination of these methods to input your music. If you want to enter a note, you can double click on the location you want, then move the mouse to the correct timing grid, choose the pitch, and then left click on the mouse. If you want to modify the duration while inputting notes, you can use the left panel or the numerical keys on your keyboard. In engrave mode, you can fine tune the appearance of your music. You can adjust the position, size and shape of any musical element, as well as add text frames, music frames and image frames. These are basically the fundamental thing in Dorico. Music frames are where the music are, and this is the blue frame that you see. Text frames are the screen ones, and then image is pink. And you can just double click and add a picture to it. The lower panel holds the information of each item from notes to text. So if you want to modify them, you can easily click on one and then modify the desired parameter below. So for example, this E, you can change the scale, you can change the accidentals, and do whatever you want with them. Bear in mind that engrave mode is only to modify the appearance. So if you want to completely change something, you need to move back to right mode. So for example, you cannot change this E to another note. For this, you need to go back to right mode. And finally, on the right side is one of the most magical and time-saving features of Dorico, which are page templates. Every score in Dorico has a master page template. This is where the location and parameters of default frames are stored. The reason to have a page template is that you can have absolute coherency in your workflow. In play mode, you can listen and edit the playback of your music. You can use the built-in sounds from Halion Sonic SE or any other VST instrument or plugin. I do recommend buying Note Performer, which is the best for classical music mockups. And in play mode, you can also adjust the volume, pan, and other parameters for each instrument in the mixer. In print mode, you can uh, print your music, of course, directly from Dorico. There is options for uh, printing directly to the printer and also getting the PDF of your file. And also there are other file types available that you can easily select here. There's also options here to select the paper, orientation, and if you want to add annotations or any other things that is related to your printing, you can find them here. This concludes our overview of Dorico's main features and modes. In the next video, I will tell you about layouts and also note input and notation in Dorico. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit the subscribe and like button and ring the notification bell. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy composing.